Hello and good evening and welcome to Greater Philadelphia Center for Spiritual Living's Virtual Winter Solstice Celebration 2020. So grateful that you joined us for this very, very special and sacred event. I'd like to thank Frank Henninger for our musical prelude on the Rav Vas drum. And I'd like to thank Daniel Naimond and Jeffrey Messino for the call to celebration musically. You'll be hearing more from Daniel Naimod throughout the evening because he is our special musical guest presenter. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to come together, an interfaith event where people from so many different religious traditions are represented and express what the movement for them really means as we bless the darkness and invite the light. So glad that you're with us this evening. We're grateful for the opportunity to be with you during this very, very special occasion. Now I would like to begin with prayer. Beloved Presence of God, we turn to Thee at this time of darkness, remembering that there is one true light, that it shines and illuminates the entire world, beginning with that light within each of our hearts. And so as we bring together our individual lights, we begin to illuminate something more beautiful. We co-create a world that ultimately works for all. And so we gather this evening, ready, willing, and so able to let this divine light shine through us. Our hearts are open, our minds are clear, and we so give thanks for a beautiful opportunity to honor, respect, and celebrate the movement from the darkness to the light and all of those beloveds who have come together to create together a beautiful expression of this divine light for all. We give thanks for this opportunity to love and to respect each other and to celebrate together heart to heart and mind to mind a most beautiful occasion. For this and oh so much more, we are deeply grateful. And so it is. Amen. And now to lead us in the Native American Seven Directions Blessing, I would like to introduce Eagle Skyfire, shaman and tradition keeper, who will explain to you a bit more about these seven directions and then lead us through them. Eagle Skyfire. Hello, I am Eagle Skyfire, and I am a tradition keeper adopted by Iroquois Six Nation, the Tuscarora. And welcome everybody to the winter solstice, which again for many Native nations is the Native American New Year. It's one of the happiest and highest holy days of the year. And we typically open these ceremonies in a sacred way by welcoming the seven arrows, which are seven divine spirits, which protect us and guide us all, and have been watching over us, all of us, throughout the centuries. So I welcome you please to join me in this blessing. And as this tradition, when we say you open up your hands, you open up your heart as we face these are the directions. Aho.
Oh, the first spirit we welcome is the spirit of the South, the place of laughter and innocence, the place of fellowship. We welcome you. Aho. Aho, spirit of the West, we thank you. It is your season, the season of the bear that has watched over us. We thank you and we welcome you as we move forward into the season of winter. Aho. Aho, spirit of the North, we welcome you. The place, the sacred white buffalo, the spirit of the winter time. We thank you so much and we welcome you, please, ancestors and sacred beings, to be with us, to open the path to say Welo. Aho, time to tea. Aho, spirit keeper of the East, we thank you so much. You who bring the breath and fire of the Creator Spirit, we ask you, please, to lift our spirits as we celebrate together as one planet, one people, one creation. Aho. Aho, Earth Mother, beautiful divine face of the Creator Spirit, the divine feminine. We thank you so much, and this is your time of rest. You remind us to be together and to rest as well in peace. We thank you so much for the gifts of being here. To all that is female, aho. Aho, Sky Father, we thank you, we welcome you. Divine male face of the Creator Spirit, you teach us when to speak and when to listen, when to act and when to be still. Your ever-changing face teaches us to go with the flow and rhythms of life. We thank you so much for the gift of this day. Aho. Aho, great spirit, you have countless names but are but one. All things come from you and all things are turned back to you. We ask you please to bless us in this celebration. We ask you please to take us by the hand. If we are your children, forgive us as we stumble and fall, for we are learning. Give us the messages that we need to guide us into this next year. Bless all of us, please. Let us never forget that we are truly one family under your blessing. Aho, Daneho, it is finished. We perform this ceremony to acknowledge that all people and all faiths come from the one power, love, divine intelligence, which we call God or spirit. We honor the richness that comes from our shared diversity and bless the interwoven energy of the divine feminine and the divine masculine. As these healing candles are lit, please silently place the names of those who may need peace or comfort into the candlelight so that they may experience the healing flame of God's eternal love. We light the first candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium. This is called the natural way. We light the second candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples. This is called the way of primal spirituality. We light the third candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the fourth candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the fifth candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the four noble truths and the path of compassion. We light the sixth candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the seventh candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of submission 
to the will of God as the highest calling. And we light the eighth candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. Good evening, Reverend Dr. Ken Gordon. Um, retired. I, I used to be the uh, spiritual leader of Centers for Spiritual Living. I know a lot of you in Philadelphia, and I've got to tell you how much I miss being able to see you in person and making contact. But on this hallowed evening of uh, solstice, we come together really, hopefully, to be able to make some sense out of life itself and how it works. One of the things that I know uh, without question is as within, so without. Therefore, it only makes sense that as without, so within. So we, we enter into this time of darkness. Now I'll, I'll share with you that fall is, uh, is one of the top three seasons that I have in my life, which probably isn't saying much, but it's fascinating living up in Canada where I do, where uh, the sun rises in the morning around nine o'clock and sets in the afternoon between three and four. So you can imagine what it must be like uh, to see that darkness and have that darkness enter in. Uh, I, I can only imagine what it was like in the ancients when people used to look out and think of the sun and the moon as goddesses or gods. And to realize that perhaps one year they might not come back again that it would leave you in that perpetual sense of darkness. Now, I'll share with you that obviously we know way better than that. This is the time of year when everything seems to slow down and begin to rest. And it is meant that way. Life is constantly and consistently in balance. Where I mentioned that our sun rises around nine o'clock and sets around three, uh, I'll share with you that in June, our sun is up until 11 o'clock at night and it rises in the morning. I don't even know what time because I don't get up that early. So, so everything is in balance and everything is set. And solstice with the uh, really blessing the darkness that comes in is a matter for me of blessing my own interior knowledge and my own knowing gives me the opportunity on a constant basis in this fall season moving up to the solstice when the days begin to stretch out longer to actually spend the time to contemplate and ruminate to look back on what has occurred in my life and look back on what is occurring in my life at that particular point and the causes and the causations to bring it there i think that this has probably been the case for most human beings throughout existence that as we slow down, we have that opportunity really to open our eyes and open our hearts to our own particular circumstance and situation. And nowadays we can look forward without superstition to the expansion of the day and the era and the time. The seasons really represent for us something within ourselves. As without, so within, we see it happening and, and we are intelligent if we take the time to actually honor and bless this time, to realize that this awakening within each and every one of us, this opportunity that we have to be able to embrace the past year and the past years is, is an opportunity which strengthens us and uh, stirs within us an awareness and an awakening of what is possible for the future. This is a loving time of year. I, I find myself constantly looking back through the windows when I'm outside and seeing the lights on, the, the family coming together, the, the connectivity, the Christmas lights, the holiday lights all around. It awakens within me a sense of knowing and of knowledge and of comfort and of peace. In our teaching, it represents that time that we spend within our own being and within our own selves. That time that allows us to truly develop a foundation that sets us in a pathway 
and represents for us the foundation of designing and developing and building our own being and our own life. Everything takes time. It is absolutely marvelous that the infinite intelligence that we choose to call God provides us with this universal opportunity to be quiet and to be still and to listen and to feel the love that permeates everything. Thomas Troward said that darkness in and of itself is nothing less than light, is not. Thomas Troward says that darkness in and of itself is nothing more and nothing less than the absence of light. It's times like this that I can really recognize that most everything in my life that I would see as dark is in itself nothing more and nothing less than the absence of love. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. Know you're loved. Now please join me for a winter solstice meditation. A tiny seed in the dark, moist ground does not question the absence of light. It trusts in the cycles of life. It simply rests, awaiting the next urging from within, sensing a slight pulsing movement, imperceptible yet viable. 
You too are a seed of life, at times active, at others at rest. Now let yourself repose in the silent night with eyes closed and heart open, allowing the darkness to enfold you, releasing any sorrow or concern as you are being held tenderly in the quiet and powerful love of the divine. You may sense a slight stream of light emerging from your heart, reminding you of the eternal light which radiates through all creation. No matter how absent or distant the light seemed to be, it never left you, nor could it, as it lives at the very core of you. This light warms, nurtures, and guides you through every cycle of your life. So gently now, begin to rouse from doubt to faith, from fear to certainty, and from separation to unity. Trust the dark, for the light can never be extinguished. Honor the quiet time. Allow the divine embrace Prepare to celebrate the return of the light, bringing you greater strength and larger joy. We bless the darkness as we begin to invite the light. All is well with our souls. Amen. Namaste, I'm Swami Durgadas, speaking to you from sacred Kashi. Kashi Ashram is named after the city in India, the sacred city of light. And today we celebrate light. We celebrate the light within each and every one of us. My guru, Majaya, would always share Christ's message to teach always teach always because always are mine, and to embrace everyone. Today is a moment for, of, for all of us to feel the embrace, the love, the love of the mother, the love that's within each and every one of us. My guru's guru, Neem Karoli Baba, would say, feed everyone, serve everyone, love everyone. And I'm here to say, share that love that's within each and every one of us. During the holidays, we want nobody to feel alone. We want everybody to feel the love of the mother. So today, as we get blessed by the darkness, by the divine mother Kali, and as we bring her light into our heart, I say, love everyone. Embrace everyone and make this a special, special holiday for everyone you know. Thank you to the center in Philadelphia and to all around the globe for allowing me to share love this moment and using Ganesh, Jai Ganesh, to dispel all obstacles so that love can bestow and touch everyone. Thank you. Namaste, happy solstice. Good evening. I'd like to thank Dr. Reverend Maxine Kay for inviting me to this year's annual winter solstice titled, Bless the Darkness, Invite the Light, Lifting Our Spirits in Challenging Times. The central theme of Buddhism is enlightenment. Enlightenment is not a goal, something to achieve, something to get. Buddhism says we are already enlightened. 
You just don't know it. As Christians, you would say, we are a child of God. You just are not aware of it. So then, it must be cultivated, worked on. My teacher says that Zen is a warrior's practice. When we take Jukai, the precepts, which is a commitment to this warrior's practice, we become, so to speak, spiritual warriors. Angel Kyoto Williams made a statement in her book that caught my attention. Any intention at all towards enlightenment, enlightened being, has to have a foundation in moral consciousness. You cannot walk tall and master your life without morality. No matter how skillful you master your life, no matter how skillful you are in other areas. Without morality, enlightened being is not possible. In Buddhism, we take the 16 precepts and follow the Eightfold Path. Ten of these precepts go like this. I vow to abstain from taking life. I vow to abstain from taking what is not given. I vow to abstain from sexual misconduct. I vow to abstain from lying. I vow to abstain from taking intoxicants. I vow to abstain from speaking of others' errors and faults. I vow to abstain from elevating myself and blaming others. I vow to abstain from being stingy. I vow to abstain from being angry. I vow to abstain from saying negative things about the Buddha, the teachings, and the Sangha community. Without a strong moral foundation, whatever we think we know about compassion and honesty fall apart. One of the biggest disappointments we have is when we place our faith in a spiritual, religious, or political leader and they betray our trust because their true moral foundation is not strong. We see that a lot of us fall short when it comes to staying on this spiritual path. This, mysteri this materialistic culture we live in pulls and tugs at us every day. Which is why we can see that it is called a warrior's path. The path is not easy. It was not meant to be easy. If our faith is strong and our moral and ethical foundation is ingrained in our hearts, we can succeed. As a spiritual warrior, we bless the dark and invite the light. And in the process, we can remove the veil of ignorance and reveal the truth that we are all a child of God, that we are all enlightened Buddhists. I've seen my share of struggle when I thought that I knew best But I've sailed through a storm instead of stopping to rest But it always seems the hardest when I've made up my stubborn mind Well, I'm changing my ways this time Wanna be like water coming down a mountain into shadowy canyons Flowing from pool to stream Wanna be like water Head uphill no more I am bound 
for the sea. Have you ever seen an eagle head straight into the wind? He doesn't pick a fight, he spreads his wings and just gives in. And in the end he always makes it home just fine. Guess he knows that every storm subsides. Wanna be like water coming down a mountain into shadowy canyons, flowing from pool to stream. Wanna be like water, head uphill no more. I am bound for the sea. I'll let nature take its course. No more thinking that I know where this river's meant to go. I have railed against the stars for the cards that I've been dealt, for the lottery I've never won, for the heartache that I felt. But it always seems when I let go of expectation and regret. Life has plenty of surprises for me yet. I want to be like water coming down a mountain into shadowy canyons, flowing from pool to stream. Want to be like water, head uphill no more. I am bound for the sea. Wanna be like water coming down a mountain into shadowy canyons, flowing from pool to stream. Wanna be like water, head uphill no more. I am bound for the sea. Hello, I'm Rabbi Michelle Perlman of Beth Chaim Reform Congregation. The triumph of light over darkness is a great trope of Jewish tradition. In the Psalms, we read that light is sown for the righteous. In the creation of the world, Genesis, it begins with light. Actually, light is at the very beginning, right, of creation. But the sun and the moon aren't created until day four. So the rabbis, our rabbis, have a real conundrum. They're trying to figure out why, how can light be in play when the sun and the moon don't come in until day four. So they imagine God robed in a coat of light, that light of kindness that shines, that creative energy that shines into the world. And that creative light shines, shines in through day four and beyond until evil comes into the world. The rabbis reckon it and they say it was shining that light unrestricted for 36 days. And then, of course, after the fall and many other things we know, Cain and Abel and all kinds of different things that human beings brought into the world, that light was tucked away. In our tradition, it's called Or Haganuz, hidden light, but it shines still. It shines in dark times. I think this is the perfect teaching for this time, this time of darkness in our calendar. The solstice is coming. The winter with the solstice will be here. A time of darkness, a festival of light. It's interesting when you look at how we light the Hanukkah candles. We light the Hanukkah candles, one shamash, one helper candle, and we, we light one candle each night, adding the first night one candle, the second night two, until we have eight candles plus the shamash lit. Interestingly enough, in this dark time, those candles that we light over the whole of Hanukkah add up to the number 36. 
Our rabbis love to play with numbers. 36 days that that coat of light shined into the world from the divine presence. 36 candles in the Chanukiah. Our Hasidic masters tell us to look into those candles, never to blow them out, and to meditate on the light or Haganuz, that hidden light that connects us now all the way back to creation, and it shines still. They tell us to look within us, to think about the hidden light that we each have in ourselves, the spark of kindness that can be lifted up. We see that Or Haganuz when we witness the wonderful kindness of the frontline workers and the energy with which people are working on this vaccine that's going to return us to some semblance of normalcy in our lives. We see this Or Haganuz, this spark of kindness, this hidden light lifted up every time a human being does a kindness for another human being. At this time of solstice, we in the Jewish community wish you blessings. And we hope that like, like us, as we look into our candles this year for Hanukkah, you will also meditate on the light, that Or Haganuz, that hidden light that needs to be lifted up always against the darkness. We will never let the darkness overtake us. We will always, always bring light. Happy holidays. Growing up in the traditional Jewish home, I always loved Hanukkah. We didn't actually get a lot of presents. That wasn't a family tradition for us, but it was most definitely a tradition to light the candles each of the eight nights. You'd gather in the living room in front of a window, turn out the lights and light a candle or two or seven or eight. The room fills with that flickering light. And of course, one of my highlights was always a couple of the prettiest melodies in all of Judaism. The second blessing that you say every night over those candles says a really interesting thing. Here's how the blessing goes. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, she'asanisim lavoteinu, bayamim ha'hein, bazman hazeh. Thank you, God, for the miracles you performed for our ancestors in those days, in these times. Bayamim hahem, in those days, bazman hazeh, in this time. Seems paradoxical, except if you look at it from the perspective that the blessing is deliberately blurring the line between a miracle that we could easily view as something long past, something for an anonymous or forgotten ancestor, versus a miracle performed for us today. And if that line is blurred, then the miracle of love, of family, of tradition, of faith, of perseverance, of health, the miracle of life itself was certainly given to our ancestors. But it is also given to me on a daily basis. It is a present, current, relevant, personal miracle, not just one to commemorate from days gone by. I always loved that message. I also always loved the song that we would sing after lighting the candles. Ma'osur Yeshuati Lechana Elishabeach Tikon Beit Tefilati Lechana Todan
Hi folks, I'm Amy Yoder McLaughlin. I'm the pastor at Fraser Mennonite Church in the Malvern area. In the Christian tradition, especially during this season of Advent, we talk a lot about light and dark. And uh, there's some beautiful things that we learn in that space. There's also some troublesome things that happen in that interplay between light and dark. Uh, we ascribe goodness to light, value to light, and we ascribe evil and bad to darkness. And that binary does not work for me. That's just a really troublesome binary. Um, what I much prefer is to see uh, darkness as a place where we learn new things. So as you all are entering into this time of solstice, I think about the first time uh, I moved out here to Malvern after living in Philadelphia for 20 years. I was so used to lights being on all the time. Uh, my street was lit, my parking lot was lit, I, there was no darkness ever. So when I came out here to the suburbs uh, and where I live right now, it's so dark. <laughs> And I was terrified of that because I couldn't see what was in front of me. But this beautiful thing began to happen. Um, I began to trust my other senses. Uh, I began to learn the things about myself when I couldn't rely on the bright lights of the street to illuminate where I was going. Um, so I developed this ability to see in, in the dark, night vision. Um, so walking from the church to my home, which is just 300 steps, because I've counted, um, I developed this ability to trust what was in front of me because I knew what it looked like. Uh, I knew what it felt like. I knew when I was getting close to home because I saw the dim light of uh, my, my porch light telling me I was close to home. There's a lot I learned in the darkness. I learned to listen for um, the sounds of deer and for the reflection of the eyes of deer as they were close by. So I knew if I was getting too close because I could hear them make noises. Um, I learned to look out for fox and to recognize when they were scampering in front of me. And it was so beautiful. I would never have noticed that if I had pulled out my, my phone flashlight to see where I was going. But trusting um, that God was present with me without light um, has been a, a spiritual blessing for me. So in our Christian tradition, we talk about um, Jesus Christ being the light that enters the world. Um, but that's not the only place where God dwells. God also dwells with us in the darkness uh, and teaches us things in the darkness. So tonight we bless the darkness um, and we're not afraid of it. Uh, we know that it's a gift for us. It's a time for us to rest and uh, be present with the God who is with us always. Amen.
This is the day the Lord has made. Assemble, Greetings of peace and blessings to all our friends at the Greater Philadelphia Center for Spiritual Living and our neighbors and our brothers and sisters. This is Fazl Sayed from the Islamic Society of Greater Valley Forge. I will be reciting a few verses from the Quran as part of our contribution for this evening. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله ملك السماوات والأرض والله على كل شيء قدير إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ To Allah belong it, the dominion of the heavens and the earth, and Allah has power over all things. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of night and day, there are indeed signs for people of understanding and reflection. The ones who celebrate the praises of Allah, standing, sitting, and lying down on their sides, and contemplate the wonders of creation in the heavens and the earth with the thought, Our Lord, not for naught, Hast thou created all this? Glory to thee, give us salvation from the penalty of the fire. I extend my heartiest greetings to all those present and to all the community around us. May we find ourselves increased in peace in us and around us. That may we be a source of greater, great benefit to all humanity and all living things and all our neighbors. 
that may our light be improved, that may we be elevated spiritually. Thank you very much. Have a blessed evening and a blessed year ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The dawn has come. Out of the darkness of the long night, the dawn has come. I rise to meet the new day filled with confidence and strength. I arise and go forth into the dawn, inspired and refreshed by the living spirit within me. O oh, day, you shall never die. The sun shall never set upon your perfect glory. For the lamp of the soul has been rekindled with the oil of faith. And love has cleansed the windows of life with the spirit of gladness. They shall never more grow dim with fear, for perfect love casteth out all fear. I am renewed in strength through knowing good. My light has come. There's one power, invisible, and you see it everywhere and every day. One power, indescribable, and you speak of it with every word you say. Mysterious, until you know the truth, as simple as the love inside of you, call it God, call it Spirit, call it Jesus, call it Lord, call it Buddha, Baha'u'llah, angel's wings or heaven's door, but whatever name you give it. It's all one power, can't you see? It's the power of the love in you and me. We speak so many languages, different clothing, different colors, different names, but different is only dangerous. When we forget that in the heart we're all the same And we'll remember once we close our eyes to see That such distances were never meant to be Call it God, call it Spirit Call it Jesus or Lord, call it Buddha, Baha'u'llah, Hashem or Heaven's Door. It's Muhammad, it's your mind, it's your soul or it's your sign. It's the universe, it's music, Mother Earth or Father Time. But whatever name you give it, it's all one power, can't you see? Whatever name you give it, it's the very air we breathe. It's the power of the love in you and me. One power, yeah. One power is what we are. moment of creation it's an everlasting peace it's the freedom of forgiveness it's the sweetness of release it's the joy of inspiration it's the sunshine on your face it's the birthright of all nations it's the boundlessness of space it's the beauty of a baby the serenity of sleep. It's 
the anger we abandon for its love that's most deep it's one power oh, forever in you and me it's the power of the love in you and me The second stage of the solstice, while the first stage is recognizing and welcoming the darkness into our lives, to really bless it and, and know what it means for us to, to take it as a, as a natural aspect of being. We move now into this time uh, as of tomorrow morning or midnight tonight, we find ourselves in a situation where everything switches, everything changes around. Now suddenly what we have, instead of decreasing lightness in our life, we have increasing lightness in our life. Might only be a few seconds a day, but, but it begins to expand. And if anything, for me, while the, the, the previous demonstrates an ability to slow down, an ability to contemplate, an ability to be able to meditate and think back on my past and think back on my life, this, this time now as we move forward, is a time to really be able to focus and look forward. We, we come out of this supposed darkness and we enter into this brilliance of the expansion of everything around us. We begin to be able to move forward with anticipation, expectation, with goals and with vision, to be able to really ground ourselves in the understanding of this balance and to be able to move forward in productivity, hopefully, hopefully, without the baggage that came from last year and the year before and the year before and the year before. We get to move forward with a newness and a freshness and every day it expands further, every day gives us a greater understanding and appreciation of this blessing that we call life whether it's nighttime or daytime, whether it's dark or whether it's light, the awakening within humanity is the key to everything. As I said previously, as within, so without, therefore as without, so within. This is our opportunity to see within ourselves, each and every one of us, and see within the people who are around us, the, the awakening and the possibilities and the potential for everything to be able to awaken to that spirit within our own being. William Meter, who was head of the Theosophical Society, said once, matter of fact, about 2014, what he said was, when, when the light grows brighter, the shadow grows. So we get to be grounded in the idea and the aspect that as the light grows bigger, we get to see and to be able to contemplate and hold the greater ideal and the greater idea of what's to come. And as we move into it, having released and surrendered those, those uh, parts of ourselves that no longer serve us, we get to become of greater service to life and a greater service to the world, a greater service to ourselves and a greater service to those we love. As I said earlier, Thomas Troward said that darkness is nothing more, nothing less than the absence of light. Well, our future 
no matter what it looks like. But if it's to be bright, then it must be filled with love. We must understand and recognize that the circumstances and the things that we see and experience as we move forward are for the benefit and the greatness and the goodness of life itself. And to think otherwise makes us victims to the circumstances and the situations that happen and occur. The truth of the matter is that when we see separation in our life, no matter what it looks like, no matter whether it's a physical or whether it's political, whether it's health, wealth, creative expression, loving relationships, anything that is conflictual that's involved in that is merely the absence of love. So for 2021, what I trust each of us will do is that we will apply love to the world around us and that it will grow and continue to expand not unlike what is happening right here and right now as the days begin to increase and light begins to increase in our lives. You know, when we master that, when we can do that, we will be awakened and we will be filled with the light that we speak about. It is a time to grow, it is a time to expand, it is a time to move. It is a time to love. So I trust you're going to have a joyous and happy holidays, no matter what you celebrate or how you celebrate it. I trust that this turning point in life that's occurring right now is a turning point that fills you and yours with the joy, the beauty, the power, the prosperity, the health, the vitality, the energy that you deserve, that you were born for, that is the real you. So happy holidays. Know that I'm honored to have been asked to do this. And know that you're honored and respected. God bless you. Thank you. Every year, Reverend Dr. Maxine Kay writes a holiday sonnet. This year, I have the pleasure of reading it for you, and it's entitled, 2020 Vision. If all this year has hastened to resolve, to live in harmony and gentleness, then every step we've taken to evolve has brought us near a world of happiness. Our patience and our faith have been immense as we stood tall and faced unfounded hate. The fruit of love has been the consequence for people of the light to celebrate. Until compassion's work becomes complete and goodness is our normal way to be, each one of us must honorably greet each inner angel ready to be free. With 2020 vision, now we see the year to come is up to you and me. And now we invite you to participate in this beautiful holiday season of giving. We have several ways for you to easily donate a financial gift to our center. Your donations help us to continue offering special events like our winter solstice, a variety of online classes and workshops, daily video love notes by Dr. Maxine and Reverend Mike, and the general day-to-day -day operations of our center. You can text to give right now by texting the number 484-494-2219. Or if you choose, you can also go to our website, www.cslphilly.org, and hit the donate button and use a credit card. Or if you'd like, you can mail a check to our center. Please send your checks to the Greater Philadelphia Center for Spiritual Living, 16 Industrial Boulevard, Suite 112, Paoli, PA, 19301. We thank you for being so generous with your gift to our vibrant and loving community. We really appreciate you. Much love to you, peace, richest blessings, and radiant health.
Namaste. Thank you all so much, everyone who've made this evening so beautiful as we moved from the darkness to the light. Thank you to all of our wonderful presenters, to our musicians. Thank you to our beloved community here, the Greater Philadelphia Center for Spiritual Living, right here in Paoli, Pennsylvania, for all that you have done to make the evening possible. And a very special thank you to our producer, Mr. Jeffrey Messino, for bringing everything together and making it all possible. I'm so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now we continue in the awareness of gratitude as we leave the darkness and move gently into the light, as we take this light out into the world to illuminate all of humankind, one light at a time, growing together, a great illumination of all the earth and of humanity. How grateful we are. And so it is. Amen. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, will be miles away Here we are as in all the days Happy golden days of yore Faithful friends who are dear to us Gather near to us once more. Through the years, we all will be together. If the fates allow, hang a shining star.
Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Thank you so much. say